Thank you, Father. Lord, we want to bless your holy name once again. We thank you. Thank you, Father, for the way your spirit is speaking to us expressly in this glorious day. Thank you for your intentions, your desire, your counsel, oh God, that is permeating the heavens, that is changing atmosphere. Thank you, Father, for the things that your spirit is doing within the hearts of the nations, within the lives of those in government. Thank you, Father, right now for how you are changing and transforming, imprinting your will, your desire, and your intention. Yes, upon the places that are known as the high places of, of the earth. We honor you, Father, this day once again that your heart and your mind once again will be revealed, will be known. There is nothing that can stop or hinder the inflow, the, re the release, the desire, the intentions, O oh God, of your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, that your kingdom is coming. Your will is being done this morning. Once again, we lift our hands and we say, O oh God, may your name once again be hallowed in the earth. The knowledge of your glory, yes, is covering the earth as the water covers the sea. We thank you. We bless your name. We glorify your name, O oh God. Thank you, Father, for the impartation, the imprint, O oh God, the revelation of your intention and desire. Thank you that nothing will be able to stop watch your spirit, yes, as desire and ordained to do even in times like this. We seize this moment and we proclaim, oh God, Father let your kingdom come into every area, into every sphere, on the social media oh God, let your kingdom come, Lord, in our community within government, cities, nation, NGOs, yes, the high tech people, oh God, wherever whoever they are, we pray that your kingdom come. That is our mandate. That is our assignment and our calling. And that's what we are believing you, Father, for this day. Even as we take our stand and pray, oh God, for what you are beginning to do, even as a nation of America enter into a new day, into a new sphere, into a new, yes, realm, into a new a, 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 a reality, oh God, of the unfolding of the reality, the revelation of your desire. We pray, oh God, that nothing will be able to stop what you have already ordained. Indeed, your counsel will stand. Your will will stand. Your intentions will stand. We want to thank you once again for granting us the voice and the boldness to speak and to proclaim these things upon the high places, upon the mountains. You say, Father, we should go to the ends of the earth and preach this gospel of the kingdom. Then your word declares the end shall come. We thank you, Lord, that as we preach, as we proclaim, as we declare this kingdom message, O oh God, that we draw near, nearer, O oh God, your days of appearance, O oh God, that we fast track your days of appearance as we engage ourselves, O oh God, yes, concerning your intention for the nations, uh, and we declare this morning, give us grace, give us wisdom, give us the capacity, the same spirit that you place upon Daniel, O oh God, and his friends, O oh God, even in captivity, the same grace you place upon Esther, O oh God, upon yes that point where she's able to stand oh god and reflect your beauty and glory father to a foreign nation we thank you once again lord that yes father we will continue to reflect and push your agenda to the place of your good pleasure. We thank you. It is your desire that all nations be saved. It is your counsel, oh God. It is your heart desire, oh God, that all nations come to the place of redemption. And so we thank you once again this morning that Lord, as we stand and pray and, 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 and believe you for great things, that there will be an, a pushing, a bringing forth of your desire. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to once again appreciate everyone that will be joining us, that is joining us this morning, all right? This is this is going to be our second, uh, 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 you know, uh, broadcast in terms of trying this broadcast. We tried, uh, you know, uh, the, the first uh, platform, which it didn't work well. We'll see how this will go. We believe in God. This is the nature of the days that we live in. We have to be, we have to be, we have to be fluid. We have to be, we have to be multidimensional in terms of our engagement. We have to be more savvy. We have to be, con we have to be, we have to know how to connect, amen, not just to, you know, things, but how to connect to the spirit and how, amen, the voice of God can lead us and direct us. Hallelujah. I'm not going to go into all of the drama that happened, you know, a few minutes ago, but I quickly want us to go back to the word of God. I was just sharing the word of God, all right, in Ezekiel. 
you know chapter 20 you know chapter 22 verse 30 now this 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 message basically is directed to encourage to build up to you know to to stand with all right in, in, in you know uh, with our with our brethren amen in america we want to stand with the nation of america as all right they get ready to you know to inaugurate i'm not even sure if that is done already to inaugurate the next you know a uh, uh, president and all of that we 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 thank god amen for what the lord is doing we thank god for how far amen the church has come and where the lord amen has brought his people all right every human being that lives on the planet amen has a divine definite purpose and plan amen the heaven has called them and as the spirit of the lord will will find it amen he's he's led us into different parts into different if you will components you call them you know ethnos nations all right and so we want to believe god this morning all right that as we as we as we witness the nation of america step into another you know realm into another dimension of of leadership we want to pray amen that god will strengthen will encourage will build up hallelujah the the, the the leaders they will grant them the wisdom will grant them the grace the capacity amen to lead the people this is something that we found in the word of god amen david you know uh, in, in fact before we go into david it was you know uh, 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 solomon that that prayed in the uh, just in the night that he was about to be coronated amen to take the place of his father uh, he went to the lord and the lord said ask anything i will give it to you i mean any 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 leader would need that kind of you know uh, 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 assurance ask anything i will give it to you all right I, I, will, I will protect you i will guide you i will provide for you and and solomon looked at everything and he said i want nothing except for one thing grant me wisdom that I may lead this great people of yours, this massive people. Grant me wisdom that I may be able to lead this people to the place of your divine intention. And the Lord said, since you did not seek for the head of your enemy, since you did not look for all of these things that others are looking for, I will not just give you wisdom, but I will also add to you all of, amen, the things that you that you require, that you need. And I think that is something that we want to pray to God, Alea, to infuse in the life of, amen, Joe Biden, amen, as a, as a next president and of course in the life of those that will be you know leading the nation with him all right we our our position in this point amen is bigger than one man our condition and our interaction with with the nation amen is bigger than just one man we want to see god's hand god's pop purpose amen come to amen, a, a reality within that nation and i believe that is what amen everyone who is praying and seeking amen the will of god amen uh, 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 is seeking for because indeed when we pray and allow the spirit of God to guide and to lead us amen we'll come to that place where we'll have a better and a better understanding amen of God's intention I, I, I said I was going to read Ezekiel chapter 20 chapter 22 verse 30 God says in Ezekiel 22 listen to this testimony I look for a man among them who will build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land i think this is something that amen the nation of america has done to a certain level all right they they, they they sought protection and and security of other nations and every other thing that they've tried all right and, and i'm not saying this to say that all right america is a perfect nation no America's got, they, you know, they, they've got their ups and downs. They've got their good side and their bad side, just like any other person, just like any other human being, just like any other, you know, a uh, society. But one thing that we know, amen, that this nation has done is the fact that they've been able to stand with other country, stand with other people, stand with other nation, all right? And even the church, at least to a certain degree, before we begin to, you know, uh, uh, see the church being deviated, being led astray, all right, by, by this prosperity gospel, by this, you know, uh, 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 materiality, driven you know ideology that came and 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 drove the attention of the people away from amen where god positioned them in fact this is what god is saying you know where are those that i have located amen to stand to build up the wall they're no longer there and i believe this is what has led amen the nation of america particularly the body the church to this point or where we we seem to be at a deficit po point but i'm believing god that as we hear the heart of god and and position ourselves all right as the the body of Christ globally and stand amen in solidarity in prayer hallelujah in intercession for what God amen has begin to do that we will begin to see light again at the end of the tunnel indeed we want to see light shine amen upon that nation we want amen the cry of the people I believe with all my heart that there are people right now that are praying that are crying to God that are seeking amen the ways of God the will of God that are believing God for God once again to return to their nation 
I believe, amen, that there are people doing that. And we want to stand, amen, in agreement with those people. We want to, amen, amen, lend our voice and also say, yes, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, amen, turn from their wicked ways, hallelujah, and, and seek God, I believe that the Lord once again will begin to, amen, return to that nation with mercy because that is our desire. But one thing that we have to, first of all, look into is that there is a job, that is a work that is required of every one of us. All right, we have to come into a day of maturity. The church in America must live childish things. Paul said, When I was a child, I spoke as one, I thought as one, amen. I behaved as one. All right, the day of maturity has come. The, the nature of hallelujah, the kind of activity that is taking place across the globe, but particularly in America. America is so divided today, and only the church can unite, hallelujah, the, you know, uh, uh, that, that nation. I'm not saying the government cannot try, they will try, but politicians will do what they need to do, all right? And they will do what they need to do to remain amen, in power. But guess what? Our agenda in the church is true unity. And this is, this is not a unity that is enforced, that is, that, you know, that is forced to people's truth. No, people, people don't need to. People don't need to follow what we do, all right? They just need to understand that this is, this is, this is the way, this is the truth, and this is the life. And we need to, amen, through the power of the Holy Spirit, persuade the people through the power of lifestyle, through the power of truth, amen. Help the people to understand we have to begin to stand against the spirit of hatred that is penetrating the nation. That spirit of divide and rule that has been brought, that has been that has been allowed to invade that nation, hallelujah, must be must be must be raised against. We must rise against it. We must challenge that spirit. We have to believe God. This is the day where God is saying, I look for a man, not a boy, not a girl, amen. Not just a teenager, not just, you know, some, you know, uh, uh, some hippies. No, God said, I look for a man. That speaks into maturity. I look for a man. We've, we've talked about this before, but I feel the Lord, amen, once again, stirred my heart and said, I need you to take this word to my people. I need you, amen, to call a solemn assembly. This is a solemn assembly. We try to proclaim this on Facebook or somehow, you know, walk but the Lord said why don't you go where to where I ask you to proclaim my word and we and here we are all right God says I look for a man among them to build up we need capacity we need a man America has been a nation that have been known to build all right to build things to build city to build nation of course to a certain degree with their own agenda but this is the time where God is saying all right because I'm not just speaking to America as a nation but I'm also speaking to the nation of God the church hallelujah because once we get the church right it's only a matter of time amen through the light and glory that is radiating amen from our life amen we, to, to begin to call the people begin to attract the people to that place where indeed we become a testimony that has also that has always been the pattern whenever god wants to reach a nation he call out a bunch of people amen he locates people here and there amen and he begins to walk in the life of those people and by the time he's done with those people those people become an, a site of attraction hallelujah that bring others into the kingdom this is the principle of the kingdom god god doesn't need to you know get everybody saved in, in, at, at, in, at once but when he gets certain few people saved this is why amen this 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 engagement is can a nation be saved in a day yes a nation can be saved in a day you look at the woman at the well when jesus was done with the with the with a with samaritan woman at the well she ran into the city she ran into the village amen she said come i have found one who told me everything that I need to know about my about my life could this not be the Messiah they say okay let's go let's go see and when they came behold I mean this is a nation that have been amen, at war that have been amen, at you know you know a religious and psychological you know a philosophical war amen with the you know with their brother all right the children of Israel the Samaritans and the and the and the, and the Jews don't see eye to eye they've been enemy in fact this is this is the narrative that you know this woman began to use amen in challenging Jesus until Jesus said hey hey let's let's push that away let's push that thing aside that that, that is not the, what is going to help you at this point in time and this is what is going on. You know, every time I open social media and you re read Facebook, you see how Christians are fighting themselves. You see how, you know, the Democrats and the Republicans, everybody's on each other's straw. It's not going to save anything. This is the plan of the enemy. This is the same thing the devil wants. It's like we're playing to the script of the enemy. Divide and rule. That's what the enemy used in this nation. And he's still using it. Divide and rule. It's no longer about, you know, the color. No. It's about the ideology. 
It's about our belief. It's about our religion. You know? And today we're not just fighting Christian. Christian fighting Muslim or Muslim fighting Christian. It's Christian fighting Christians. You know? Our little pet doctrine. Our idea. You see, what is the problem today in the church is that the idea that we have, we have imbibed regarding expectation uh, is Donald Trump that should we know it should be Biden. You know, because of those little ideas, you know, and those ideas are, are foreign spirits that were imported into the church. When we, when, we, when we begin to refuse and begin to, you know, move outside certain values, certain doctrinal values in the word of God, you see, there's no way we will not amen, move into error. There's no way we will not be deceived by the enemy. And so this is the same script amen, that Americans are falling into right now. The American, amen, the, 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 the church in America is so divided. I'm not just talking about the white church and the black church. I'm talking about people of, of same color. Homes are divided. Families are divided. You know, just because of political you know, uh, 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 affiliation, just because of political ideologies. Come on. Uh, you know, when, when, when Joshua... You know was getting ready for the battle of Jericho you know the story when he was getting ready for the the Bible says the Lord appeared to him the Lord of hosts appeared to him and he came Joshua came he said are you for us or against us are you for us or with our enemy and the Lord of hosts who who himself is our Lord Jesus Christ said I'm neither I'm neither for you nor against them now we have to come to this understanding that God amen, is about one purpose the, and the assignment of the kingdom, the assignment of the church is about one purpose, the kingdom. You see, once we miss what the kingdom of God is all about, we cannot allay, we cannot but fall into the trap of the enemy. Once we miss, once we miss, amen, the concept of the kingdom, we will, we will build ideas, we will build denomination, we will build, you know, a philosophy that are strange and that will estrange us, amen, from each other. And that's why today you find Christians fight each other, you wonder, why are you fighting each other? Why? Because, you know, the most powerful thing on earth is ideology. That's why, you know, I, 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 was, I was listening, watching one of the uh, documentary, I guess that was done by some people, you know, Bill Gates and, you know, the CIA and, the, you know, <laughs> and, you know, Bill Gates was talking about how they've gotten this vaccine that can help people, all right, who have this extremist mindset. Yeah, and all this vaccine can correct them, you know, can change th their mindset, all right, from being, you know, religiously extreme, all right, to, to become normal human. And I said to myself, you know, this is, this is a mistake. This is, I mean, this is a waiting disaster. There is no vaccine that can correct, you understand, ideology. What corrects ideology, hallelujah, is the, is, is, is the position, is the reality, amen, of Christ in the life of people. Because when people believe in something, you know, some time ago I was talking about there's a difference between what you believe and faith. You see, faith will always follow amen, your belief. Faith will always follow your belief is your ideology. Now, once the church does not understand, in fact, the church to a certain level do not understand this idea. So we preach a lot of faith that is built on a wrong value, that is built on a wrong ideology. All right. Jesus did not send people to go kill. Jesus did not send a, man, a, a church that will carry guns and fight people. No, that's not Jesus. That Jesus never said that. In fact, I remember reading, you know, is, uh, uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 7 and chapter 2, how Jesus won. I mean, the Bible says a flicker of light, it will not snuff off. It will not blow off. It won't blow it off. That is how strategic in the justice system of Jesus that he will not amen, take power into his hand. I mean, he, he was born in the day, in the time of the, of the Roman Empire. He did not raise a spear. He did not raise a gun. He did not raise a, you know, a disciple that will go, go and fight the Roman Empire. No, he used the power of the spirit. The power of the spirit is the power of spiritual persuasion. And those who came to him, they came to him because they were persuaded. They knew, amen, why they were following him. They, they knew why they believed in him. All right? They were not, they were not coerced. They were not, you know, harassed. They were not, you know, uh, deceived. They were not, you know, cajoled. No. All of these things that we are using to try to, you know, uh, 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 gimmicks and, and, and techniques and, you know, tactics that we want to use, all right, to say we want to win people and we, we want to persuade people and we want to force people like we see what is going on right now with the people called the left, all right? So if you don't believe in certain things, then, then you are the enemy. No. These things are, they ought not to be. This is not how we persuade. This is not how how we win people 
all right we don't we don't impose ourselves we don't impose our idea we don't impose our philosophy on people we don't force people christianity hallelujah at least the christianity that i've i've seen that i amen i follow via the word of god not what people are preaching out there but where the word of god amen there is no place where jesus said you go kill people all right if you don't believe it's not in the word of God. It has never been, amen, the value principle of God. Hallelujah. Through your life, your life must become a testimony. Bible says, amen, this is our testimony. This is, this, this is the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says, amen, the spirit, the, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony, hallelujah, of Christ. We have, to, we have to understand that if our life cannot change people, if what people see in us, amen, cannot bring people to a point where they bow the knees and say yes, I want this God. Then we're not preaching the gospel. So we have to begin to stop this idea that no, uh, 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 we, we, you know, the battle of fighting ideologies. And f no, no, no. Ideology matters because what what ideology we imbibe, amen, is what leads us to have the kind of faith that we have. People have faith in all kinds of things. People have faith in all kinds of things. So even as a nation, amen, we can we can begin to you know be led astray because of the false idea because of the false belief because of false promise all right or because of what somebody said in the word of god that is not balanced all right people can stand and say but this is what the word of god says i, I believe it yes you believe it but you've got to allow other scripture to speak to what you believe so you don't amen lead others astray this is how cultism begins it's so easy to start a cult but it's always difficult amen to end it cult begins with an ideology Called begins with a philosophy. It begins all right, with, with what you are persuaded about. Particularly when you've seen something, you've heard something. All right? You say, well, but this is what I saw. But guess what? That's why the Bible says one should prophesy. Amen. Two should watch. You sit down and judge. If there's anything today, I believe God, amen, wants to do in America is to bring the American church back to the true gospel because it's from the truth, the truth of the gospel that we are able to see our error. Nobody can wake up today and say, no, your side, your, your side is wrong. You know, today we have the side who supports, you know, a Christian, who support, you know, a, a, a Joe Biden, and there is a side who support Donald Trump, and everybody is fighting each other. Why are we fighting each other? Because we are not seeing, amen, what God, amen, have shown on in his word. Some people are standing on certain prophetic, you know, I'm a prophet, I believe in the prophetic, I stand with the prophetic, but you know, guess what? Even in the prophetic, amen, we can, we can have one view, one side, and not see all the side, and this is what I've been saying, even to somebody like, you know, uh, 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 Dr. Brown that I respect, so much all right i mean you you cannot you cannot blanket amen you know one use one word to blanket the entire you know a, a dimension of the prophetic all right people who have this wrong you know idea that all right the, the prophets are getting it wrong because what they prophesied did not come to pass <laughs> you, you you need to think again because even in the prophetic all right and we've seen that in the word of god all right that god can change his mind all right because he's god he changes his mind you see so if we if we have this idea that because it's a prophecy, all right, and if we say it this way, it must be so. Ah, we're gonna, we are going to be deceived. The enemy is going, in fact, the enemy is going to use the fact that God did not bring to pass what we thought, amen, will come to pass, amen. God, the enemy is going to use that, amen, to lure us to the point of disappointment, just like I believe a lot of people today are disappointed. First, because, you know, Donald Trump did not win. And secondly, all right, many people are afraid that, well, is Joe Biden coming in? All right, the Antichrist has come. Who says? Who says he's the Antichrist? All right, all right. We, of course, we can see we can see all kinds of you know values and all kinds of things out there. All right, not just in the life of one person, but across the across the board. Amen. That is showing us that we are in that time, we are in that season. But so, how do we get ourselves ready? How do we prepare ourselves? What kind of mindset are we supposed to have? What kind of belief system? How do we how how do we live life in the day where we are seeing the manifestation of of the spirit of the Antichrist? I'm not just talking about the person i'm talking about the spirit which has been there even from the day amen of our lord jesus christ people have been antichrist from the day from the from the very birth of our lord after all herod amen sought to kill jesus king herod sought the life of jesus 
They said, go to Egypt, go stay there. Amen. So we have to begin to understand that we are in a day, we are in a time where we must not allow the enemy amen, to lure us to the point that we are pointing finger to, to, and saying that one is the Messiah, that's the Antichrist. All right. We have to know how to measure, how to balance. Amen. When we see certain spirit operate in people, we must know, amen, what the Lord is saying to us. And we must we must also understand what gets us to that point, amen, that 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 will bring us to the point where we are we are, we're not able to even identify that that's a spirit that's a false spirit all right but the first thing i really want us to look into here is that god says in ezekiel Ezekiel, you know, 22, verse 30. I look for, I'm searching, I search for one man, one mature man among them who will build up the wall. All right, before we were shut down, you know, the earlier stage, I, I was looking at, I was trying to look at the word build up. All right, God is saying, I'm looking for a company of apostolic Christians. Apostolic Christians, amen, have the ability to build up. Apostolic Christians, amen, apostolic Christians believe in the entire counsel of God's word. They don't believe in one and leave the and leave the other. They don't choose, amen. They don't decide. Well, this is what we preach in our church. This is this is this is this is what we believe in our denomination. There's nothing like that. An apostolic Christian, amen. If the entire scroll believe, amen, in the total counsel of God's word, I believe in the total counsel of God's word, and I think that is what have helped me as one who function in the prophetic office. My 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 flair, my desire and hunger, all right, to have a balanced, you know, doctrinal life has helped me, all right, to keep perspective, to keep understanding that all right, when God speaks, all right, and 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 what he said does not come to pass, coming to pass <laughs> is based on my own interpretation. <laughs> The coming to pass of God's will and purpose, amen, most time is based on our own narrative. God's word never falls to the ground. Every word that God has spoken, amen, I hear and amen. But the way God brings his word to pass, the channel, the, the method in which God uses, amen, to bring his, his counsel to pass is what many of us, amen, are blind to. You know, we can talk about this in so many areas. And until we begin to have a mature spiritual understanding, until we begin to live that babyish, that you know, you know, childlike, you know, mentality, and begin to understand the way, Amen. God speaks and the way, Amen. God, God acts in terms of His counsel, in terms of His intention. Remember that God is still sovereign. In the prophetic, the sovereign wisdom of God and the knowledge of God must guide, Amen. How we foretell, and how we foretell. You know, there's a foretell and there's a foretelling. All right, we, we, we must be Christians, amen. Christians that are built, amen, on, on foretelling, declaring the heart of God rather than foretelling, all right. Because you can want to foretell things that the Lord has shown you just one side, you've not seen the other side, and you can run with that. And at the end of the day, you misrepresent God, you misrepresent His intention. And we all do that in most cases. That's why we're all growing up, all right. The very first thing they did, as you know, as a test, you know, to the prophet Ezekiel when you know God called him and prepared him. And the first thing they ask him is, what do you see? And he said, well, this is what I saw. They said, well, you've seen well. Or else, <laughs> you, you didn't see well. Remember, there was a man they prayed for. Jesus said, what do you see? He said, I see men walking like trees. You didn't see well. They had to pray for him. They had to take him through another process, another season of curriculum and learning. Until they prayed for him, they said, now what do you see? He said, I see all things well. So we have to understand that even in our prophetic you know, uh, 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 understanding, we may not see everything clearly. And if we proclaim, we declare, amen, we, we go and represent the heart of God, the mind of God, based on the path that we have seen. And we do not, you know, understand that what we have seen is a path. And we say, well, this is the whole thing. We misrepresent God because God is not going to respond to our path. God is not going to respond to our assumption. God is not going to respond, amen, to our, our, you know, our idea. No matter how strong, no matter how strong those ideas are, God will respond, amen, to his desire, to his intention. That's why we have to spend time in him, with him, in his presence to know that truly this is what God is saying. Can the nation be born in a day? That was a question that was asked. Yes. 
Nations are being born, but the process to which they are being born, amen, differs from place to place because how God engages amen, nations differ. The way God is engaging Iran, you know, North Korea, amen, is different from the way God is engaging. And please don't tell me that God is not engaging North Korea. The fact that you don't know anything about what's going on in North Korea, the fact that you don't know about what is going on deep in Syria or at where there is war, the fact that you don't know what is going on, amen, deep into in, in Iraq, in Iran, amen, it doesn't mean that, hallelujah, God is not moving. God is moving mightily. But guess what? He doesn't announce his move until the due time, until the right time. Hallelujah. How God engages a nation like America is totally different from how God is engaging a, in a nation, uh, you know, and his church in, in Libya. Having the understanding, amen, for, for nation, for mission is important. Even among those who are in the mission field. There are people who are still running missions you know, the way it was run in the 70s, in the 60s. No, you get it wrong. You have to understand that this is the day where the wine skin are changing. Heaven is changing our wine skin. They are giving us new paradigm, new understanding. The message has not changed. It's still the, it's still the, it's still the same message. But even that message, amen, in its newness, hallelujah, is bringing us to a higher understanding, to a higher level, to a more, amen, robust understanding of the ways of God, of the intentions of God, amen. God will raise people, amen, at every season that will represent, amen, his intention. Tension, amen, in the uniqueness of the season. So what are we saying? God says, I look for a man, amen, among the American church. I'm, I'm searching for a corporate man, a mature people. I'm looking for those, amen, who are able to rise up and miss the ashes, who are able to rise up, who are able to lead, amen, their people out of the quagmire, out of the fear, out of the doubt. Earlier. You cannot lead a people, amen, if they refuse to rise. So you've got to sit with them and encourage them and build them up it's time it's time for the people of god to rise up again in america and stop the blame you see you have to stop the blame that means that somebody is still going to blame you but not blaming back amen means stopping the blame not fighting back not challenging back you see because we all have a strong opinion of what we think what we believe this is this is what we believe even in fact the bible said so can't you see both sides amen are the wrong are the wrong path because they're both using the bible but it's the interpretation that's why we need mature people today amen to come and begin to help us to understand the heart of god the mind of god because it's not just about reading the bible anybody can read the bible imagine my son amen the way he reads and understand the bible is totally different from the way i will read the same scripture and understand it that's why, amen, the, 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 the man was reading, the Topian Enoch was reading. They said, do you understand? He said, how can I? The issue is not the fact that he's not, a, he's not, he's not literate. He could read, but he did not understand what he was reading. He was reading Isaiah, but he did not understand the interpretation. And that interpretation does not come because we go to Harvard, because we've been to Oxford. No, that interpretation comes because we are called of God, because we are imparted by God, because we are sent by God. Hallelujah. That's why I'm here. That's why I can declare this word, because I know I've been sent. There's a word that's been placed in my mouth, that as I declare this word, amen, understanding, revelation, interpretation will be begin to come into your heart amen this is this is a grace this is a gift comes from god and that's why we honor men of god all right because the knowledge and the wisdom they speak from amen comes from a realm that is from above and that realm amen superimposes itself amen against every dimension of wisdom or understanding the philosophies of men will never be able to fix there was a time i was saying something man can never give amen himself something outside of himself except such a man is dead to himself you can never give, you can never help yourself, amen, out of yourself because you are limited to what you know, except you begin to seek for a wisdom that is above. This morning I was talking about that, amen. We have to come to a higher dimension. That's why a priest is called among the people, from the people. I believe the Lord is saying, I'm calling forth a new order of priesthood out of the nation of America. I'm calling forth a new order of leaders, amen, out of this system that we call church that has become weak, that has become, you know, almost obsolete, amen. God is raising a new order of voice, a new man, amen, who will be able to lead the people like Joshua led the people to the place where, you know, Moses led them to. Looking for a people, a leadership like Joshua that will lead the people further than the place Moses led them to. But we have to begin to believe God for understanding to see. 
We have to begin to believe God to understand that, amen, a new order of, of men and women are being released. I look for a man among them who will build up the wall. Wall is designed to protect us. Wall is a state, amen, of how we think. Wall is, it is a dimension of our existence, amen. Wall is there to protect us, amen. It, it is there as a humu immune system, amen, to protect us. Is there as our spiritual guide, amen, to protect us, amen. The wall defines, amen, you know, a sense of community a sense of life a sense of protection will build up the wall and stand before me and stand before me in the gap it's a ministry of a priesthood God is looking for a new day a new order of priesthood who will emerge in this new day it's not the time to be afraid of who is there at the end of affair, affair. it's time to pray for them it's time to pray, amen, for Joe Biden, amen, and the rest. It's time to stand in the gap. It's time to, it's time to lift up our voice. I mean, Daniel, Daniel not only, amen, lived in Babylon, Daniel, amen, excelled in Babylon. Joseph excelled in Babylon. This, these are dimension, amen, of a kind of a life, amen, that is hostile, that, that, is, that is very, amen, challenging and difficult to, you know, to the values of God. There is nothing that they did not do, amen, to try to bring down, amen, you know, Joseph. Beyond just selling him to Egypt, all right, uh, Potiphar's wife did everything to make sure, amen, uh, uh, to compromise God, God, God's value and purpose in the life of, of Joseph, but she, he refused, he went to prison, amen. Even in prison, God was still showing forth his glory. God was still revealing, hallelujah, his splendor in the light. Listen to this. We can live successfully in a time like this, amen. We, in fact, God wants to reveal his glory through our life, amen, to the unbelievers, to those who, 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 have, who have decided to be our pr protectors, who have decided to be our enemy, who have decided to be, amen, the enemy of the gospel. God wants our life to be a testimony to them. God wants your life to be a testimony to them. This is a word, amen, to the body of Christ, particularly, amen, in the American community. I want to encourage you that we need to go back, we need to return back, amen, to our position as leaders, particularly. If there's anything right now America needs, amen, is sound governmental apostolic leadership. Leaders, amen, who are not here and there, who are not, you know, you know, two-faced, two who are not two-mouthed. Leaders who, amen, build their life on the integrity of God's word, amen, who understand what it means, amen, to be a vessel, to be an instrument of God's word, who will not, amen, compromise the standard of God, even if it means going to prison for standing for truth because if we if we don't begin to engage this kind of thought that amen <laughs> with what we're seeing happening some people might have to <laughs> go to go be i mean we saw in the book of acts at the beginning of the church they were in prison that should not be our fear we should fear him who has called us, amen, who has the power to, 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 to destroy everything, who has the power, amen, to, 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 to pull down, to nullify. That's the one we are called to fear, not men. The fear of men should not be what drives us, it's the fear of God. Is the fear of God, the fear of God, the fear of God, and the fear of God compels us to love. The fear of God, amen, it, it, it's, not, it's not something we dread, amen. The fear of God leads us to do right, to live, to live just, amen, to walk and to, and to encourage, to build up, hallelujah. And look for one among them. Let's look at another scripture. Thank you, Father. In fact, before we look at Isaiah uh, 57, let's go to Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66 from verse 5. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. The fear, the reverential fear of God, amen, and the, and the, and the respect, amen, the value, the, the, the sacredness of God's word must return to us must return to the church, must return to the body of Christ. So when God speaks, we don't say, well, that's not for me, that's for them. No, it's for us, it's for you. Hear the word of the Lord. You will tremble at my word. You, I mean, you hear the word of God. You have that sense of God. God has spoken. I mean, if the word of God can speak to us, we, we should not begin to fight, amen, what we hear, amen, even from, you know, prophets. And if what we are hearing from prophets, amen, does not align with God's word, we don't need to fight. 
We just need to just push it aside and say, well, you have spoken. That's your voice. But here's what God has said. Because wherever God speaks, amen, God's word always, always connect, amen. And God's, God's voice, God speaks in various ways, in various dimensions. And he uses all kinds of methods to speak, amen. And God's, God's method of speaking are always in harmony. The word of God will not contradict the voice of his prophet. The voice of God's prophet will not contradict God's word. Amen. The, the things you see in the revelation will not contradict what God has penned down in his word. The fact that you have not found a corresponding you know, a, a word in that word does not mean that there is no word amen, to confirm and affirm what, what you claim is a revelation. If you have a revelation that contradicts what is in the word of God and what amen, a, a, aligns to the character of God, then it's not, it's not God speaking to you. No matter how, how, how bright what you saw, amen, it's from the devil. God does not contradict his, his, his process and his word, amen. The style, the method, amen, may be unique, but at the end of the day, they speak to each other. But the first attitude we must have, amen, is that we must tremble at his word. You who tremble at my word, amen, your brothers who hate you, listen, listen to this, your brother who hate you and exclude you because of my name and have said, let the Lord be glorified. <laughs> they're hating you and they're saying, let the Lord be glorified. This is the condition of the American church today. While certain people are trembling at the word of the Lord, we're having their brother hating them. We cannot allow this. We cannot allow politicians, amen, to, 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 to divide and rule. We cannot allow, amen, ungodliness. We cannot allow perversion. We cannot allow false culture, amen, to divide and rule, amen, the church. We have to begin to lift up, amen, the value of God's word. We have to begin to believe God, amen. And listen to this. When I say lift up the value of God's word, I'm not talking about people who lift up one side. Very prejudicial. In their preaching. I, I know many men of God like that. They are very prejudicial all right, in their delivery of God's word. Amen. They are one-sided. You cannot be one-sided. The fact that you don't like one or you don't understand the other side does not mean that that side is not relevant. Come on. We have to eat. Learn to eat the entire scroll. If you don't know how to eat it, amen, invite somebody to teach you. Say, help me. The little penny Enoch said, I, I, I don't know what I'm reading. I need somebody to give me interpretation. That was a man that is, you know, equivalent to, you would say, a prime minister, you know, a, 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 a finance minister of a nation. Hear the word of the Lord. You who tremble at my word, your brothers who hate you and exclude you, they exclude you. They say, no, they are the Democrats. No, we are the Republicans. They are the God knows what. They exclude you. We've excluded the, 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 the idea of exclusivity. We are more important than them. We are more prophetic. No, we, we are more into the... Listen, the fivefold ministry cannot... And I, I hate when I see those who are supposed to be teachers speaking down on the prophetic and those who are in the prophetic, in the prophetic amen, castigating, amen, the ministry of teachers. It's, it's not of God. The fivefold ought to function, amen, as one gift. That is the hand of Christ. That, and that's the reason why, amen, the Lord ought to give us, you know, this, this spirit, amen, in, in a, in a five-dimensional reality. Because imagine if one person have all of this, that person will become a God. God doesn't give us everything. He gives us each other. Your brother who, who hates you and excludes you because... Of my name and I've said let God be glorified what a condition they, they are expressing hate and they are saying let God be glorified that we may see your joy let God be glorified so we can see your joy ah God help us hear the uproar from the city hear that noise from the temple it is the sound of the Lord repaying his enemy all they deserve. It is the sound of the Lord. From where? From the temple, from the altar. Come on. This is something we have to look into. This is something the American church needs to give heed to. This is something we need to give heed to here in South Africa. All right. This is, this is, this is civil war in the house of God. Uh, this is what is going on today in America. We're seeing it here. Let me read it again. Amen. I'm reading, you know, Isaiah 66 from verse 5. Yeah, hear the word of the Lord. You who tremble at his word. 
That is the first company that we're seeing when we are able, amen, to come to the point where we, we hear God, God speak to us and we tremble. We, are, we, you know, we, we, are, we stand in awe. That's no longer there. I made a statement a few days ago on you know, my Facebook uh, 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 timeline. All right? it, 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 when you find yourself living in a time in a day where the word of God no longer steer your heart. Where you you no longer you're no longer afraid by what you hear. You you don't you don't have a, a hunger, a passion, amen, for the word of God. You hear the word, it's just like any other news, any other thing out there. Ah, you need to be careful. In fact, I said you need to drop every other thing that you're doing. You need to go and search and seek and find, amen, that burning passion of God again in your heart. Because once you lose that, you've lost, you've lost everything. And if you are not careful, you're gonna lose your salvation. When you get to the point, all right, where, you know, what, what you used to hear in terms of God's word will cost you to weep and fall and, and cry. And suddenly, you know, you laugh over it. It doesn't bother you again. You are in a state, hallelujah, of backsliding. And this is not just something that happens to one person. This is something that is happening to us as a nation. When you see how, amen, you know, a group of people will gang up, a group of believers will gang up against other Christians. They don't care. They don't, they don't. In fact, to them, is they, they, they prefer you dead. Just because amen, ideas and opinions don't speak, don't marry each other. So hear the word of the Lord. You will tremble at his word. That's the place we want to be in this season in time. Where, amen, the word of God no longer mo 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 motivate us, no longer steer us, no longer pushes us to the place of prayer, no longer causes us, amen, to respond, amen, in truth and in love to our, fr our fellow brothers. Where the word of God can no longer speak to us and say, you know, I, I say give to that brother. No, you say, no, I'm not going to give to that brother. I'm not going to do that. Where we no longer respond, amen, to what we know God is saying to us. When we get to that point, it's a dangerous place. We want to get back to the point, to the place where we tremble. I used to know some American preachers. You know, growing up as a young man, you know, these people come to Nigeria, they come to our church. And when these people preach, my word, I tremble at the word. I tremble at this word. And I just want to be like these people. Because I know that what they are proclaiming and declaring were genuine. I can remember the very first woman that at least I knew prophesying to my life. Her name was Georgia Pennington. I will never forget Georgia Pennington. This woman, I stood in front of her and she looked at me, lay hands on me. And the word was like, you know, was like, you know, you're cutting somebody with a sharp knife. The word went straight and cut me through. It's like she saw me for who I am. For the first time I encounter the minister of a prophet, I said, wow. This woman knew me. She didn't know me. In fact, we became, you know, very close. She said, there's something special about your life. Here's what you've been through. This is what has happened to you. Here's where you're coming from. Here's where you are. But this is where the Lord is taking you. I said, Lord, I just broke down in tears. I mean, I have encountered. These people came from America. Another woman, uh, 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 I've forgotten her name right now. What's the name? Uh, I've forgotten this same woman's name. Maybe this is the reason why I've got a lot of women in my life in terms of ministry. Because, you know, God uses women to, to, to impart. Not like, not like I, 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 I went out of my way. No, I, I'm just where God will have me be. And these people, they impart my life. They impart my life. They impart my life. Come to think about it. Women. Hallelujah. Remember another woman, Coletta Harris Vaughn, a black American woman. Whoa, Jesus. At least everybody who knew me as a young pastor back in those days, they knew me and the, and the material and the, and, the, and the tapes of this woman, Coletta Harris Vaughn. What a woman. Finally got to meet her, came to uh, you know, Nigeria and came to my Bible school. You know, I was all over. People did not, people were wondering, what is you, what's your problem with this woman? I said, you guys don't understand. Because I've been buying this woman's tape. You know, I, I love to buy. I will go to the, you know, to the bookshop. I will buy, you know, money that I was supposed to eat. I'll go buy tapes. I'll buy books. I was listening to this woman, Coletta Harris Vaughn. I said, Lord, I mean, a word is like fire that is shut up in my bones. A woman. Anointed of God. I said, Lord, 
I said to God, thank you for bringing me to Bible school. For this woman alone. I met her, met her husband. I thought, okay, our husband will be as fire as a woman. Oh, our husband can't stand her. I'm telling you, this woman, she carries something that her husband will have to. <laughs> she, she's on fire for God. Call it a Harris Vaughn. God have used women to, to shape this man that you guys see today. And that's why when I see women, I'm not thinking of sex. I see grace in them. And I see women, I don't, I don't want to see women that are, that are born of God. I don't just look at their future. I don't see their head do. No, I see something. Oh God. A woman brought forth our Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine meeting Mary walking on the street. <laughs> That's why the Catholic church were almost worshiping. In fact, not almost. They worship Mary. <laughs> That's not our calling. That is contrary to what amen. We honor them, but we don't worship them. Coletta Harris Vaughn, Georgia Pellington. Trying to remember the third woman. This woman was the one that taught me ab about the ministry of the prophetic through the kings. She opens the word of God and is like Jesus Christ. She was the first person I saw who were able to stand in front of a church and say there is sin on the pulpit. I'm not going to preach on this pulpit. An American woman. I tell you something. No matter what we want to say about the Americans, God have used the Americans, amen, to be a blessing to the nations in terms of missions. I know some American pastor who brought books to, to Nigerian churches and, and start, you know, these Nigerian men, they started school. Some started, you know, book, bookshop. They started selling books, books that they were sent to empower and equip the people. They weren't selling them. But guess what? This book came with tons of books. I mean, I'm talking about people who, 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 who have been, you know, uh, 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 making demand on their church members in America to, you know, to bring books, to buy books, Bibles and all of that. Put it in a container, ship it to Africa. And you tell me that these people are, 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 not, are not of God. They are ungodly. Please. This is the time where the church in Africa must rise up, hallelujah, and support the Americans and, and pray for them, amen. This is the time where we have to send missionaries, we have to send encouragement, we have to send money, resources to them, and help them to rise up and build, hallelujah. Let us not just become a church that always take, take, take. It's time to give back. And this is the best I can do. I can prophesy. I can stand in the gap. I can stand with them. Amen. I can, I can declare. Hallelujah. And say, I'm not choosing side. We're on the Lord's side. And we all should be on the Lord's side. But let's rise up. Let's move away from the narrative. Because there's one enemy that we're dealing with. White or black. Green or yellow. We have one enemy. We have one enemy. And that enemy is, is not... It's not, the, it's not the next president of America. The enemy that we have is not Joe Biden. It's not Hillary Clinton. It's not, our, our, our enemy is not even Bill Gates. <laughs> no matter what these people might have done, no matter their agenda, that's, they're not our enemy. Why we wrestle not against flesh and blood, friends? Let's not play into the lies of the enemy. Let's identify who our enemy is. Our, our battle is not carnal. If you want to fight, you want to fight human beings. You want to think human beings are your, are your enemy. You are going to lose the battle because not even God will support you. Imagine if the church, you know, had, of course the church also said, you know, this guy you call Saul of Tarsus. Are you sure this guy is born? This guy is the one that has been killing us, that has been imprisoning us. They said, he's a chosen one. How do we know if Joe Biden is the chosen one? That doesn't mean earlier that Donald Trump was not the chosen one. Are you getting the point? God, God has a way of doing his thing. And when we track God, when we follow God, when we follow the footsteps of God, we will see him amen, at every injunction, at every you know, direction, at every amen, position, we will see what he's doing. We will understand his ways. So let's stop fighting each other. Hear the word of the Lord. You who, who tremble at my word, your brothers who hate you and exclude you because of my name. They have said, let the Lord be glorified. 
that we may see your joy. Yet, they will be put to shame. This is God saying. So God says, don't fight. I'll fight your fi battle. Don't fight them. If you're going to win, I discover this. If somebody tried to, you know, misuse me or misunderstand me or fight me, it is not my place to try to fight that person back. All I need to do is take that person before the Lord and say, you see what this person have done? And people like to do that. They like to undermine you. You know, because they are so low, they want to bring you to their level. They think that you also, amen, uh, you know, uh, see yourself the way, you know, the way they see themselves. You know, when people always like to talk down on you, look down on you, you know, uh, uh, don't want to honor and respect the grace of God and the call of God in your life. When people want to challenge your wisdom, challenge your understanding, challenge your knowledge, amen. You don't need to do that back to them. You just need to ignore them and take them before the Lord and let God put them to shame. This is what God says in his word. Yet I will put them to shame. Then the next thing, he says, hear the opera. Hear the opera. <laughs> Where's the opera taking place? In the house of God. There's a civil war going on in the church. There's an opera going on. God is raising the values of his intention and his, and his kingdom earlier. And is creating commotion within this house. So we just need to believe God to hide us in the day where this commotion begins to take place. He says, hear the opera from the city. Hear the noise from the temple. It is the sound of the Lord repaying his enemy all that they deserve. This is a scripture that gives us a context to what amen, I'm about to share and to what amen, has actually led me to this broadcast. This context amen, is what has led us in the midst of all this opera, in the midst of all this chaos, in the midst of all this challenge, hallelujah, and God bringing judgment amen, to the city and of course from within, within the temple. It says in verse 7, before she goes into labor, where is the she? The church that trampled at his word. The church that refused to give in. The church, amen, that, 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 that takes a stand at the city gate. The church that has chosen, amen, not to bow to the lies of the enemy. That says, before she goes into labor. Are we in labor right now? Are we going through a time, amen, of the present? Yes, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's hot here, but we have to release this word into the spiritual atmosphere. They said before she goes into labor, she gave birth. We give him back to a new nation. We give him back to a new company of people in America. Through this word, we are giving birth to something. Before she goes into labor, she gives, she gives birth. Before the pain comes upon her, she delivered the son. Who has ever heard of such a thing? Who has ever heard of such a thing? Who has ever seen such a thing? Can a nation be born in a day? <coughs> or can a country or a nation be born in a day? Before, amen, she brought forth in the moment. The Bible says, yet no sooner is Zion in labor. No sooner, just as Zion is in labor, that she gives birth to children. God says, do I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord. Do I close up the womb, amen, when I bring to delivery, says the Lord, do I close the womb? When I bring to a time of delivery, says the Lord, rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad, amen, for her and all who love her. Rejoice greatly with her. All you mourn over her, amen, for you, for you will, for you will, amen, nurse and be satisfied at the, at the, at the comforting of the breast. Something is happening. Kosabraha. Are you seeing the promises of God? I'm just sharing the promises of God with us. Now read one more scripture, then I'll be done. 
I said, this is just a prophetic steering in the spirit for the nation of America. We're standing in solidarity. We're standing in solidarity. Hallelujah. Isaiah 57 verse 14. And it will be said, it's a proclamation, it's a prophetic proclamation. And it will be said, build up, build up and prepare the road. We're building something through this prophetic amen, utterance, through this prophetic release. We're building something. We're establishing something. Amen. This word can be used amen, to also advance the counsel of God for your nation, for your city, for your community. What we're declaring is a principle. What we share amen, on our platform are always principle. Even in the prophetic declaration, you can find principle there. Build up, build up, prepare the road. Remove the obstacles out of the way of my people. See, this is why we war. This is why we stand. This is why we pray. Because God has a people in America. God has a people in China. God has a people, amen, in the Far East. God has a people, amen, in, you know, in, in, in Africa. God has a people, hallelujah, in, in the Bahamas, amen. Come on, in the Caribbean. God has a people across the nation. God has a people, amen, in Ireland. God has a people in Netherlands. God has a people in France, in Germany. God has a people, hallelujah, in Russia, in Ukraine. God has a people, hallelujah in the island, amen, in Iceland God has a people, hallelujah in Zambia, in Zimbabwe God has a people in Namibia, God has a people in Libya, God has a people in Saudi Arabia, God has a people in Kuwait God has a people remove the obstacle out of the way of my people who are the people called to do that? Is this, it is you and I. This day we remove every obstacle out of the way of the people of God in America. We, we release strength and grace into that realm, into that region. We pray that righteousness once again. You know, today I remember the song of uh, um, this man. I remember his name now. The name just skipped my mind again. Ron Colony, Ron Colony. Return to God, America. Beautiful song this man used to sing. And I used to pick this song and I weep and I cry. And I just pray when, I, when I'm playing this song. It's time America return to God. It's time to stop fighting each other. It's time for the church to rise up. It's time to start praying and start believing God. It's time that you realign back to God's eternal intention for you. It's time to you align to God's counsel for your life again. As we as individuals as God a calling, so does nation. It's time to return to your calling, your purpose, your, 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 your authority. It's time to submit, amen, to God once again. It's time to begin to see God, amen, the way he wants you to see him. It's time you correct, amen, the, 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 the false order, the false position. It's time, amen, to believe God for great things. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't yield to the lies of the enemy. Don't surrender to the lies of the enemy. The Lord your God is coming. We pray, Lord, pour your healing oil, O oh God, upon the nation of America. From the north to the south, from the east to the west. Let the church be united again. Lift for yourself elders, O oh God, who can unite the American church. Break down the walls of denomination because denomination cannot do this. Denomination can only unite their denomination. But we need, O oh God, elders, O oh God, who can unite the entire nation. Who can bring the nation to the place, O oh God, of truth. Father, we, we come against the evil, O oh God, that wants to prevail over that land. We declare, we come against the works of, un, of ungodliness, the spirit of witchcraft, the spirit of, of destruction, that spirit of Jezebel. We come against you. We declare you will not prevail. Evil will not prevail over America. No. The will of God will stand. The counsel of God will stand. His intention, yes, will stand. We stand with you this day. I pray, Father, for all those prophets that feel, oh God, discouraged because they feel their prophetic word did not come to pass. Those that are genuine, who have given a word, oh God, that they only knew of a path. I pray, strengthen their heart. Grace them, oh God. But also we pray in the name of Jesus that you will flood out of America false prophets. 
false prophet that they have raised and they've deployed to nations. We pray in the name of Jesus, you will bring them, oh God, to judgment. You will shut their voice. You will shut their mouth, oh God. But we pray, oh God, for genuine true prophets that are immature. We pray that they will find a place where they can learn again. They can sit down and learn of your ways and learn of your desire and your intentions, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, there is a time. There's a time to grow. There's a time to sit. There's a time to rise up. There's a time to soar and fly. But there's a time to sit and learn. In the name of Jesus, we lift up, oh God, yes, your church. We lift up, oh God, the body of Christ in America. We pray grace upon you. Grace upon you. Wisdom. Let wisdom build your house. Uh. Let the mercy of God continue to reach you. In the name of Jesus, we know, Father, this day that there are no boundaries to our prayer. And therefore, we release the spirit, oh God. A spirit of supplication. You sought for a man. Thank you, Father, for mature men. Mature, maturity. Ma mature men. It's not talk I'm talking about gender. We're talking about a quality of life. The spirit man people. Let them rise up, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you. Honor and glory to your name, Father. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Father, for what you are doing as we sow this seed, O oh God, into that nation. Lord, in return, we thank you for harvesting our nation here in South Africa, in Nigeria, in Cameroon, in Ghana, O oh God. We thank you, Father, for every spirit of terrorism, wickedness, destruction, corruption, perversion. We command them right now to be gone in Jesus' name. We thank you for newness. We thank you, Father, for grace, supplication, power to pray. We pray, we pray, we lift up, we lift up prayer all across the land. We declare in Jesus' name, let the church be awakened, O oh God. Let there be a time in the name of Jesus, O oh God, of awakening. Let this day be a time of awakening. Let the church, O oh God, rise up. You gave us 10 years, O oh God. We've stepped into the 90 year, O oh God. Father, give us strategy, direction. Continue to speak to us, O oh God, as we build up. He said, build up, build up the highway for the Lord. We pray in Jesus' name that we will not be tired oh god we will not be weak our hands oh god will be strengthened oh god we will continue to build up in the name of jesus lord that will become that church that is invincible we thank you honor and glory to your name we bless you god we praise you god all of the grace and resource that you are placing us to 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 resource your church in seasons like this we pray let it come forth oh god in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for deploying new, new men and women out there who will become resource to the nation. We receive it, O oh God. Father, we receive resource to build, O oh God. Yes, that we may be able to encourage our fellow brothers in America and sisters, all of them. Grace! We have people following, following us from America. We pray grace upon them today, O oh God. We pray love, clarity, direction upon their lives. They will not be confused. You have not given them the spirit of confusion. Make them an instrument, vessel, servant, oh God, who will rise up and teach others and say, it's not over. It's not over. They say, this Jesus that you see, go forth in this manner. The same he will come back. Father, we thank you for clarity, prophetic direction. Thank you, Spirit of God, for what you have begun to do. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Honor and glory. Honor and glory. Praise. Praise wait for you in Zion. We thank you, Father, for this time of broadcast. We bless your name. We praise your name. We bless your name. We praise your name. We bless your name. We glorify you. Thank you for the churches that are waking. Thank you for the churches that are waking. Thank you for businesses that are waking. Thank you, Father, for businesses. Thank you, Father, for resourcing your people once again. Thank you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name, O oh God, that the things that have been built and established under Donald Trump, O oh God, that are good, that are righteous, that are godly, will be kept in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We honor your name. We bless your name. Honor and glory to you, Father. Lamb of God, we appreciate you. Thank you, Father, for grace to pray, to stand, and to declare this word. Virtue truly has left me. I thank you, Lord, that you will replenish me. Thank you, Lord, that you will continue to lead me and guide me. Thank you, Father, for your spirit, for fresh oil upon my life. Thank you, Lord, for protection upon my household. Thank you, Father, for grace. Thank you for the resource to continue to push forth your desire and your agenda in times like this, O oh God. Lord, that I will not be discouraged, that I will not feel weak and tired. Lord, I thank you, Father, for your, for your word, for your will and plans and desire over my life. I bless you for this ministry. Lord, continue to grace. Send help, O oh God. Send resource to, 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 to this work, O oh God. Father, encourage our hands. Encourage my hands. Strengthen me, O oh God continue to proclaim and declare your will in Jesus name I want to thank God for 
this time to be able to pray and stand and, and just release this word into the spiritual atmosphere. We say to you, it is well with you, amen, America. It is well with you from, 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 from coast to coast. We proclaim that it is well with you. We pray for all the states. It is well with you. We pray, Father, for peace, your peace, your peace, your peace. What a word you've given to us today. What a word, what a word, what a word to declare, oh God. Isaiah 57, what a word. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for everyone that has joined to, to listen, to watch our live broadcast today. I really, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much, my dear sister Tina. Thank you for joining this morning. And those that are also watching us out there, I know there are a few people watching us. Really appreciate it. God, continue to encourage you and empower you and endow you, even in times like this. Please continue to pray and encourage the nation of America. They need it. They need it. Amen. This is, this is the time they need our prayer. More than ever before, let's continue to stand with them. Amen. In prayer. God bless you all. Have yourself a wonderful and a prosperous afternoon. God bless you. Bye-bye.